A weekly magazine has a big story that the editor wants to have printed as soon as possible. She has asked the printer to run an extra printing press to get the printing done more quickly. Press number one takes 12 hours more than press number two to do the job. When both presses are running, they can print the job in eight hours. How long does it take for each press to print the job alone? To answer the question, we will first organize our information in the table below where we have a column for hours needed to complete the job and then a column for part of the job completed per hour. And we have a row for press number one, press number two, and a row for when the two presses are working together. Let's begin with the fact that we know when both presses are running, they can print the job in eight hours. So for the row for together, we place an eight for the number of hours needed to complete the job. And if it takes the two presses eight hours to complete the job together, then the part of the job completed per hour is going to be one eighth. If it took the two presses working together six hours, then the part of the job completed per hour would be one sixth. If it took the two presses working together two hours, then the part of the job completed per hour would be one half. Notice how the hours needed to complete the job and the part of the job completed per hour are reciprocals of one another. And now let's write expressions for the hours needed to complete the job for press number one and press number two. Remember we know that press number one takes 12 hours more than press number two to do the job. Let's let the variable x represent the hours needed to complete the job for press number two. And because it takes press number one 12 hours more than press number two to complete the job, we can use the expression x plus 12 for the hours needed to complete the job for press number one. And now let's write the fraction that represents the part of the job completed per hour. Remember, if we know the hours needed to complete the job, then the part of the job completed per hour is going to be the reciprocal. Which means for press number two, the part of the job completed per hour is going to be one over x. Again, if it took press number two, let's say 10 hours, then the part of the job completed per hour would be one tenth. And for the part of the job completed per hour for press number one, we would have one over the quantity x plus 12. And now we can write the rational equation that we need to solve to answer the question using this last column. If together they can complete one eighth of the job per hour, then the sum of the rates working alone must equal one eighth, which gives us the equation one over the quantity x plus 12, which is the part of the job completed per hour by press number one plus one over x which is the part of the job completed per hour by press number two. This must equal the part of the job completed per hour when they work together, which is one eighth. By solving this rational equation for x, we can go back and determine how long it takes each press to complete the job working alone, represented by x and x plus 12. Let's solve this rational equation on the next slide. To solve the rational equation, the first step is to clear the fractions from the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And notice how none of the denominators have any common factors, which means the least common denominator is equal to the product of the three denominators, which is eight times x times the quantity x plus 12, or eight x times the quantity x plus 12. Which means the next step is to multiply both sides of the equation, or all of the expressions on both sides, by eight x times the quantity x plus 12. Because each product involves a fraction, let's write eight x times the quantity x plus 12 as a fraction with a denominator of one. Now before multiplying, we will simplify. Starting on the left, x plus 12 divided by x plus 12 simplifies to one the product simplifies to just one times eight x or eight x plus for this product x divided by x simplifies to one leaving us the product eight times the quantity x plus 12 equals on the right eight divided by eight simplifies to one leaving us with x times the quantity x plus 12. Now we need to simplify by clearing the parentheses and combining like terms. So we distribute eight here and distribute x here. 
This gives us 8x plus distributing 8, we have 8 times x, which is 8x, plus 8 times 12 is 96, equals on the right side, x times x is x squared, plus x times 12 is 12x. On the left side, we do have like terms, 8x plus 8x is equal to 16x. The equation simplifies to 16x plus 96 equals x squared plus 12x. Notice how we do have a quadratic equation. Let's set the equation equal to zero and see if we can solve by factoring. Because we have the x squared term on the right side, let's set the left side of the equation equal to zero by subtracting 16x on both sides and also subtracting 96 on both sides. Simplifying, this difference is zero and so is this, giving us zero equals. On the right side we have x squared and then 12x minus 16x is negative 4x, giving us minus 4x, and then we have minus 96. And now see if we can factor. If it does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors where the first terms in the binomial factors are x and x, because we have x squared here. And now we need to determine the factors of negative 96 that add to negative four. Not an easy question. To help us, let's look at some of the factors of 96. Well, 96 is even. It's equal to two times 48. And 48 is equal to six times eight. I think we can stop here because notice how these factors tell us that 96 is equal to 12 times eight. And because we're looking for the factors of negative 96 that add to negative four, we can use negative 12 times positive eight, which does give us negative 96 and negative 12 plus eight is equal to negative four. So we have x minus 12 and x plus eight. This product is equal to zero when x minus 12 equals zero, or when x plus eight equals zero. Solving for x here, we add 12 to both sides, giving us x equals 12, or solving for x here, we subtract eight on both sides, we have x equals negative eight. But remember, x represents the number of hours it takes press number two to complete the job alone. So because x represents hours or time, we know time can't be negative, and therefore we exclude the solution of x equals negative eight. This is called an extraneous solution. Now that we know x equals 12, we can go back and answer the question. Now that we know x equals 12, we know it takes 12 hours for press number two to complete the job alone. And because it takes x plus 12 hours for press number one to complete the job alone, and we know x is 12, 12 plus 12 equals 24, it takes press number one 24 hours to complete the job alone. Let's write this out as complete sentences. I hope you found this helpful.